Oh, he's a controversial oh. one. Where's it gonna go? Just looks like someone's ran over a lobster. The worst bottle and the best bottle at the same time. It's so good and so different to these other things. Just a scribble on a wow. napkin for 50k, yeah. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, no. Wow. I wish more distilleries did this. Phil's trying to kick you from the chat, but I'm never going to talk to you again. People often say it's what's inside the bottle that counts. But what about if we talk about what's only outside the bottle? So today we're talking about bottle designs. You will not believe some of the bottles that some distilleries released. But there's only one person I think would be perfect for talking about whiskey bottle designs and that's Jeff Whiskey. So Jeff Whiskey runs a whiskey YouTube channel but he also is a designer. That's his full-time job. That's how he pays for nappies for his children. Some people call him a giant bucket of hunker chunk. You definitely set the bar far too high to begin with though. <laughs> Uh, I've been working in design for a decade, but I still know nothing. And we're going to make it like a tier list. We're starting from gold tier, class, nice, meh, shite, and why, as in just, what, why? How, how do they do that? Who am I? I think the best way to look at a bottle design is the redesign, because that's when most people are talking about it. You know, is it is it better? Is it worse? I think a lot of people often say with redesigns, it's worse. So uh, we're going to see if that's actually true. And our first one here is the Glen Morangie. 10. Well, like you said, everyone hates something new. No one likes change. But this has probably got the most flack I've seen in like a redesign. Redesigning a logo and a brand is the worst gig you can get in the design world. Because especially yeah. if it's something well loved, the old one, the best way to actually to describe the reason why they've done it is if you look at the two bottles side by side and squint your eyes, you'll see it goes blurry and you can only read the text on the right one on the new. Oh. Maybe don't squint that hard. <laughs> <laughs> Big picture, what they want is they, you're walking down to the supermarket, you've bought some, what do you have in the UK? Hobnobs. Yeah, and, hobnobs. Uh, and you think, you know what goes good with a hobnob? A bottle of whiskey. And so <laughs> they're thinking, these guys buying their hobnob, you what stands out, right? I guess if that's the goal, it stands out more, definitely, than you design. And if you've had chocolate hobnobs, you're in a sugar haze anyway, so you're going to pick up whichever one you can read. <laughs> The biggest yeah. thing is color contrast. So it's a light orange background with like a dark orange text. There's a type of color blindness where you wouldn't be able to really see the two between them. They've made it more accessible, but can I talk bad about it now? I've been nice. Do it. Lock and load. Lock and load. Everyone knows the big problem, which is how you pronounce it now. The font is amazing that they use the new one, yeah. but they've split it, make it huge text, but that's not how you pronounce, or is it how you now pronounce Glen Mo Rangi? And I think that's the biggest issue people have. And I'm exactly in that category of people who got stuck in the habit of pronouncing it the wrong way already. Like most bottles now, because I'm now like, I've got a YouTube channel, I've got to like probably learn how this is said. But when I first got into whiskey, the Glenmorangie was one of those early bottles. And I always thought it was Glenmorangie. Even now, I keep defaulting to Glenmorangie. And with this new design, so that's quite yeah, the problem, Glenmorangie. Rangy. Also concerned because you said because you've got a YouTube channel, you need to learn how to pronounce them right. I've got a YouTube channel. I've not done this. <laughs> I can't even say old Poltani right. I'm even more insecure because I've got a Kiwi accent. And so I can barely do the English language. When I was traveling around Europe, there were a few countries I went to. I had a couple of people ask me, oh, what language do you speak? <laughs> 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 That's a real slap in the face, that is. He must speak better in a different language. That must be what it is. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. He's doing really well. He's trying his really hardest here. He's doing a great job for his second language. Now, what can you really do, bud? <laughs> they might as well just ruffled your hair and called you a scamp and given you a gold star for trying. <laughs> <laughs> so the old. I like the fact it's heritage and how they've got that, the little square icon they're using. But for me, yeah. the old style will only get a meh. Yeah, I agree with that. All right, and we'll do this one. I would be inclined to appease the whiskey folk to say it's shite, but there is a lot of step ups that they've done with this. Can I put it in between meh and shite? This is one you need the everyday person to be able to pronounce. For whiskey geeks, I can kind of accept that Bunahaven is a hard thing to pronounce. But for Glen Morangie, which people have in the cocktails, I'm thinking that's a, that's a machite. Yeah, a machite. <laughs> oh, he's a controversial oh. one. 
Yeah, what are your thoughts on the rebrand for Talisker Term? The previous bottle, I like it. The way it's written, it's almost like what you'd see on an old map or something. Yeah. I really like how they've leaned into that, the sea thing and stuff. On the new, it reminds me of if you went down to like a Walmart and you walked into the toy section, some sort of superhero, that's the design around the box of some little action figure called Talisker. Nah, it's bang on the money. It's definitely, it's something? lost the heritage look. Use of orange, it doesn't fit in. And the fact they've got that orange zigzaggy oh yeah it's showing the coast or whatever it's just the talisker 10 was in my all-time favorite visually bottles just for the label they've made it look so busy as well i think the aim was to make it like let's get modern and the fact that they've had to make the map bold it just looks like someone's ran over a lobster and hopefully you can never unsee that now <laughs> whenever you see the new talisker yeah dead lobster yeah the original bottle for me it's in between class and god tier i don't think it's god tier for me to be honest and i think classy is the right word it's a very classy design still looks like a, a normal whiskey bottle i'll settle for class okay so we do we <laughs> what are you thinking uh but it is definitely shite make sure you guys watch the end of this video because there's going to be some fantastic bottle designs coming up that will definitely fit this y category but that's probably the only reason i'm not putting in the y category because i'd say this is pretty bad but i just know there's bottles out there that are even worse this is gonna be a shite for me too another bottle redesign so third one i remember owning this old aaron and i remember thinking i love this bottle but I just hate that logo, that weird like italics. It says italic with, with a weird tail on the A and... As you know, I'm a big advocate of drinking responsibly, drinking lots of water, getting lots of rest, quality over quantity. However, these days I host a lot of whiskey tastings, I go to a lot of whiskey tastings, and often there's like six drams and it's on a weeknight, so I can't guarantee I'll be feeling perfect the next day, especially that I'm no longer in my 20s. So to be extra safe, I am grateful for today's sponsor, which is Zbiotics. Zbiotics is a probiotic drink produced by PhD scientists that produce an enzyme which breaks down the toxic byproduct of alcohol, which builds in your gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, causes you to not feel 100% the day after drinking. So practically what I do before a whiskey tasting, I take one, then I make sure I drink lots of water, I make sure I get lots of rest that night, and then I can make sure I feel great the next day. So you can get 15% off your first order of Zbiotics by clicking the link down in the description or scanning the QR code on the screen, it's pretty fancy, and then making sure you use the code FIRSTFILL at checkout. <laughs> Back to Aaron, what do you think? When it's the Aaron Malt, it's so unbalanced. If you read it right, the Aaron Malt Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. Mm. Like, you got the word malt twice. I don't read it as Aaron. To me, it looks like the two R's are slightly too far apart. So it looks like it goes R ran, like a pirate who's uh, just been down the gym. R. And, and come back, come back here, Ed. Arr. Arr, <laughs> no wonder Ed. she's running. What have you done? If you, if you keep saying R. <laughs> what am I saying? Anyway, new bottle. What do you think of this? Overall, it's an improvement, but I don't like the font they've used for Aaron. The stencil, ah. so you've got the gap in the letters. I'm dyslexic and I'm not good reading anyway. I'm not the brightest yeah. bulb. And the fact that there's these little gaps really causes these shapes to separate a lot. I still struggle to read the word Aaron, but for a completely different reason on the new one. Right. Everything else they've done really well, like with the craft paper. The fact that they've got Braille on mm. their bottles is brilliant. All for more accessibility. Yeah. It's like I think more brands should do. I love the design. Mm. I feel like this is kind of the direction Talisker could have gone. If it's not kind of flashy and in your face, there's something kind of quite humble about it. But it's modern. It's like a modern classy yeah. bottle and i know a lot of people say oh no it's all about what's in the bottle it's not the outside of the bottle but at the end of the day whiskey's not a cheap item to buy so it is nice when a bottle is like a little mm. nicer you can put it on a shelf it's a little bit like back in the day when you bought music and it would come with a nice cd case it's almost that same idea like it's not about the case but there's something nice when the case is good let's check it on the on the tier list where is it gonna go the original bottle i just didn't like it i don't think it's bad but for me it's a mere i'm, I'm in mad with you you want to dip its toe in shite don't you God, maybe just a little toe just yeah. a little pinky toe and a little bit of shite. <laughs> We've all been there. But this is right up there. 
between class and gold tier. I really like this bottle. Feels different to other whiskey bottles, but still feels classy. But I think as a whole package, it's one of my favorites. Yeah, as a whole package, I wouldn't put it as god tier for me. And what's that? Phil's trying to kick you from the chat. For me, <laughs> I was I would have put it as noise. Are you? But instead of going from slanted, more innate logo to then the stencil, they could have found a better middle ground. If we do 60-40 split, 60 class, I'll I'll accept that. The fair trade. Great deal. But I'm never gonna to talk to you again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. This one's juicy. This is Yeah. The worst bottle and the best bottle at the same time. When I heard that we was gonna do this bottle, I knew I was gonna milk it. And the fact that <laughs> Okay, I've, I've had that written down in my hand for the last two hours. <laughs> Come on, Jeff, you've got this. Now it's your time to move on over to a more successful channel. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, no more. <laughs> this is getting utterly ridiculous. No. Oh, no. Uh, no. I've always been embarrassing and terrible at jokes before I became a dad, and it's just become so much worse. <laughs> I, I can only apologize to my daughter. So for people who don't know, Glen Scotia's old bottles, you know, this is Scotland. Let's just chuck a, a cow on it. And then it got nicknamed the Disco Cow Bottles. It's just horrendous. <laughs> These are like, what have they, what on earth? Like, not this red one. Like, what the? It's almost so bad that it's good. What's that movie, Sharknado? Like, just a movie that's so bad that it almost kind of it becomes comes back good. around again. Glenn Scotia are missing such a trick. because So they release their festival bottles every year. But if they released a festival bottle oh, that looked like, like this, yeah. it would be that's... their best selling festival. No matter what the finish oh, is, it if it's like Tawny Port, <laughs> it would really sell amazingly because people love bad looking things yeah they should just lean into the like just make it super ugly like put cows just around the whole bottle i don't know whoever coined disco cow but it just sums it up so perfectly just a cow he's at the disco he's having a good time you know what he's having he's in a bottle of 21 year old glen scotia at the disco yeah <laughs> that's so juxtapositioning isn't it a 21 year old <laughs> scotch and then you just got this just absolutely <laughs> cower arrayed off its face you know what's funny at some point they sat around a ballroom table Okay, our best 21 year old, $300, what do you reckon? And old mate at the corner is just like, I reckon we should have like a pink cow and uh, <laughs> some cool lights on it. And like, it, we should make it look like it's a disco. It's that guy who's just come back from a rave. He's there in his tie dye t shirt, like absolutely hanging. <laughs> and he's just throwing his ideas out there. We've got Scotland. But what if we attract the youth? Let's make it neon. <laughs> what do the kids want? What about the new bottle? I think this is a successful rebrand. The biggest issue for lots of people is brands lose personality, but yeah. they've been really smart about it. But with the heritage of Campbelltown, they, mm. they know they have this kind of aesthetic of we're heritage, mm. high quality stuff, but we don't do all the flashy stuff. It's definitely, if you look at all the Campbelltown whiskeys, mm. I would say it's the most modern looking, but it still fits in with them all. Let's do this one first. For me, this is just meh for me. Like it's it's a nice whiskey bottle. Like it's not bad, it's not offensive. Somewhere between meh and nice. Yeah, I think that's fair. I would put it in between meh and nice. No, it's to do very bottle to bottle. Like the Victoriana, yeah. it doesn't look like this anymore, does it? Old no, style I think with the stamp. It again, yeah. What I really don't like about the Victoriana is that the bottle is too tall. Yeah, 100%. People have whiskey shelves. This is a big shelf too. It'll fit. I've never once seen anyone praise, ah, oh, this bottle's great because it's tall. It's like Bimba and Optimal. They're always at the top of people's shelves because they're too tall. Short bottle is better yeah, than short, a tall short bottle. stubby bottles are definitely better. Big fan of a, a short stubby. Yeah. But what about oh. the bottles? <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is, is that definitely disco probably. cow. God tier. Yeah. God tier. Yeah, this is yeah. either God tier or this is Y. God tier. Can it be in between Y and God tier? Can it go off the bottom and then into the top? Yeah, because that's the problem. If we split the difference, we end up in mere, and it's not yeah, a mere bottle. It's not mere at all. Like if they made this bottle to kind of take the piss intentionally, I think it's God tier. But if they went out thinking, oh, this would be a nice design bottle, it's just why. Why have we listened yeah. to Rave of Fred again? Craig Allerkey. 13. I like that it kind of feels like it's a newsletter from the 1700s newspaper. There's a lot going on. It's really busy, but it kind of knows that. I don't like love it. I still don't think it's my taste. I know what you mean. And have you ever seen any old Western 
railway posters mm. where they yeah. screen print different layers on top of each other. That's what it reminds me of to me. I do really like it and just imagine the uproar if they went the route of Talisker, removed all the pencil lines and just made it a big run over chicken or something instead. Yeah, it'd be too boring. Like they could modernise it and it could work really well if they may kept the font of Craig Ellicke with this, that flowing mm. shape and the really extreme C. Yeah. Um, and if yeah. they just neaten it up, so a really good example is Lefroy. So if you look at Lefroy's mm. wording over the years, they've, it's just been slightly polished as it's gone on. So it's still got yeah. that heritage drenched typeface, but it's been it's so true. much more cleaned. Does Craig Ellicke have a website? 1930. Agree. Yeah. I'm just stuffing up their back ends where they're like, I wonder what age group people visit our website on. <laughs> <laughs> There's a large group of people Crikey. from the 1930s. <laughs> We're really popular with 90-year-olds. <laughs> In the top left-hand corner, that looks awful. The website logo they use by having yeah, it what? flat. There's no reason to have it flat. It looks a bit like Glen Allerkey's. I do not like Glen Allerkey's logo. No, I, I fully agree with you. Both agree on shite. Let's go to the yeah. shite category. Like most people go, oh, they shouldn't redesign. It was better than before. I feel like Glenn Allerke, I'm like, no, you do need to do a redesign. Yeah. Come on. I, I might be a noise for me. I could even get a touch of class. But there we go. Yeah. I think the old bottle was this weird, like primary school handwritten font. I can see why they redesigned it. Like it, it wasn't great. There's elements of it that are actually quite classy. But I think the logo is and the, this header and font is so off-putting for me. Kills the whole bottle for me. With the new one, it's very controversial. I've seen a lot of people really, really hate this new design. It makes me sick. We've got to get a few comments for this, but I actually like it. I think it's cool. I think it's bold. It's a bold malt. When you have the Ben Romick, it's a very like, got a lot of character. It's got a lot of personality. This one's bold too. And apparently this font's based off what was on the warehouse at the distillery. Some people think it looks a bit Russian and a bit like Soviet. But I don't know, I quite like the boldness of it. I 100% agree. It's a really good redesign. They could have done middle ground, taken the old one and kind of not gone to a completely different extreme. But it's an improvement. So if you look at the old Ben Romick bottle, as you said, like that school handwriting, it literally yeah. looks like their kids got a tip X and just written on it. It's really mismatched and you can't even see that as a 15 year old whiskey. So in that little gold drop is where they got the number 15. It's like I'm the worst at pronouncing whiskeys and Ben Romack's not the hardest to pronounce. But if you've never seen or heard Ben Romack before and you saw that, you may not even pick it says Ben Romack. So it's a huge improvement. I do see the Soviet style and their assets that they have on their website show why they've done things the way they have. But a lot of people haven't seen the context. They've just seen this bottle that looks like it could be vodka. Obviously been annoyed by it, but I think it is growing on a lot of people. Ben Romack is this kind of punchy powerful little beast while yeah. the old one looks like it could just be a soft little space side like yeah. a nice gentle flowery little squiggly of a dram a cup of tea and a biscuit <laughs> and back to hobnobs again are we <laughs> hobnobs i just want to have a cup of tea and a biscuit and a lie down did i do the accent right yeah yeah you've nailed it <laughs> <laughs> and i've been romac it <laughs> just fits too well <laughs> well on the new site the, with a new boss you, you want, want a better Mac. Mac. It's yeah, not oh, you, yeah, want you want one. You want one. Yeah. Get this down, you, you boy. <laughs> We've turned into like Cockney villains from a Charles Darkin. <laughs> this is getting wild. We're going off the rails. <laughs> okay. Old one. I think this is a shite for me. Yeah. And then the new one? I would put it between noise and class. I thought it'd be interesting to touch on codes and numbers, content of what you're trying to say on a bottle. I'm quite pro talking about being dyslexic like I always thought I was just thick growing up and that's what all my teachers thought and because of that it's given me this kind of slightly skewed view on certain bottles and how they name things an example is Ardner Merkin I've heard so many great things uh, about it there's good reason it's really good whiskey but yeah. I was always hesitant to buy it due to the mm. AD and then followed by numbers it put me off buying it just because I would try to read the numbers in order and it seemed to make no logical sense in my brain. Well, what is it I'm buying? Talisker 10, you know what that yeah. is. I'm not going to buy a bottle just because the number practices makes me uncomfortable. And it's to do with some like faulty wiring in my brain. Yeah, there is something about the AD012101 that just kind of makes me a little bit frustrated. It feels a little mm. bit like Sony do this. Like this is called the what? WH1000MX1. Like The Sony WH1000X. M3s. 
terrible name. Whereas like Apple will go, okay, this is the M2 MacBook Pro. It makes sense, but it is almost kind of more an engineering kind of approach mm. rather than like it's been more understandable to, you know, the greatest number of people. Once you know probably how that code works, it probably makes sense. Because I think that's like the year, then what version yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah. I did have someone explain it to me and it's like, yeah, mm. that makes sense. And then going back to it now, I could not tell you what it is. And I found the same thing in the Port Charlotte. PAC, it's, it's weird. You think it must be an acronym for something. Mm. But actually, no, PAC is just the first three letters of Pouillac, which is uh, Bordeaux left bank wine. All right. Which is, Didn't know that. <laughs> those first three letters is actually trying to tell you about the wine, but... Who's going to pick up this bottle and go, oh, look, it's a left bank Bordeaux wine mm. cask. It, I thought it was an acronym for something like powerful armored cats, you know? That's what I thought it was. Well, that's what you would expect when you open that bottle. <laughs> but yeah, I, I always thought it was the PAC. I always thought there was just Port Charlotte and then they just put an A in the middle, like Port A Charlotte. Port A Charlotte. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's Charlotte. Just it's like there. when you see someone you haven't seen for a while, you know, you've got a bottle of <laughs> yeah. port in your hand. You're asking around who wants some port. Hey, Charlotte. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and saying that, I love the Port Charlotte design. I like that. Mm. I like it squatty. It feels rugged. Like it feels like this is the thing you take into war. It's like a bullet canister. You could drop that in a mortar. Exactly. And it plays into Isla, the big smoky scotch. Overall design is perfect, but just in that little bit. Having difficult naming conventions, I think can be a hindrance. If you know your bottle of Ardner Merkin AD012101 is like your jam, you will remember that. Also a bit daft people like me, I've got no chance of remembering that. Yeah, if it was the Port Charlotte 10, that would be God tier for me. The main Port Charlotte 10, that's a God tier. But the pack for me, where would you? Believe? Yeah, it would go down to class. It doesn't deserve to yeah. be penalized more. No, it's just one part of it. And where'd you put the Ardnamurka? It is a good looking bottle. And I do like that they have the information of what is it, the distilled date or the bottling date. I do like that mm. extra information. And I would put it as noise. Yeah, I really think if they found a way to make this more understandable, a bit more like a bit romic, I think we would be in a class category, I think. I put a clump of all the like independent bottlers together who do out their things. And I think by being independent bottlers, I'm only assuming it's because you have less pressure and less people involved to kind of dilute any ideas so you can get more wild with it. They can take more risk, right? Compass Box are well renowned for their great looking labels and all the artwork and styles they do. It kind of looks like a mixture of a road sign and a train sign, the way they word Compass Box curves yeah. over and it works as a really good stamp to put on top of any busy design. But interestingly, yeah, cool. so Rex mm -hmm. from the Whiskey Tribe, when they were looking to release their bottles, they got in touch with the company who does the designs for Compass Box. Mm. And he said it was 50K just to get a draft drawn of the label wow so just a scribble on a wow. napkin for 50k yeah wow. so whether that's and just because they're so locked in with compass box any external work beyond that they charge a real high premium or that's just the level they charge now and compass box pays it because yeah, they do so many different bottles as well and say that i love it I really love the design. It's so cool. As you said, it looks professional, but it also has lots of personality. I think out of all of them, Orchard House is the best looking one. For me, I would go class. Yeah, I'd go class too. I really like this one. I think it's cool. I can see some people think it's a bit like a dinosaur brand, but I'm kind of yeah. like, yeah, but that's I like dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are awesome. <laughs> I like it. It's real different. The glass, if you've ever had a bottle of this, feels really... The cost of making this... Just the yeah, it must be bottle crazy. production must be insane. So you got Rase, it tells you the hero information, but then if you turn it over, it goes much more deeper, which yeah. is the nice whiskey geek stuff. What kind of cask do you? I wish more distilleries did this. Tell us the cask you're using. Even tell us a little bit about the still. What what's different about the still that you've got? If we're sharing that whiskey with someone else, we can also tell that person rather than just like we have the finest casks and whatever bottle shape. It just photographs beautifully. The light reflects from all the little divots. I'm going to nitpick because oh. I'm a designer and I have. Oh no. The only issue is the use yeah. of like kind of gold foil with the name Arla Rasse. That causes quite a lot of readability uh, problems. It reminds me of, you know, back in the day with like early Microsoft Word and you could change the like text to like a texture. 100%. It's Word art. It's so close to being it. Just incredible. Yeah, I think I could still give it God tier. It's your glass of the bottle is so good and so different compared to other things even with that like the text and the kind of slight word arty thing it's got a slightly heritage look to it 
but it's mm. so modern and it just does the brilliant act of combining the two. Highland Park has got a lot of flack for how they've leaned into the Viking thing almost too much. I actually don't mind these bottlings, but I do know some of the ones like at Travel Retail and stuff where it's like an X and like, I'm like, oh man, okay, now you're just taking this too far. You can kind of see that the owners are in Highland Park, also own McCullen. Like the marketing's kind of too on your nose. It's a little bit too kind of marketing led. Right, it's surface level. So we're surface level mm. Vikings. So it's, so mm. I remember getting the Highland Park 12 and being like, oh, this is super cool. Like, oh, what is the connection with Vikings? And then they don't really go into it. They should really mm. find like stories of like, if they could find one Viking family, that lived yeah. there and yeah. they dove in, they named it after that family. And then you could then go on the website and it had the whole story about that mm. Viking family. That gives it more depth. It gives it more authenticity and more context to the whole Viking thing. They yeah. could have gone, Vikings are cool. And this is how it connects to our whiskey. Then just like, yeah, Vikings are cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Love a Viking. Yeah. Swords. Yeah. I'm a Viking too. Yeah. It'd be like if Talisker made it all pirates, like pirate ships. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like hooks and stuff and like a parrot. Like, yeah, we're pirates. The connection to McAllen is so clear. McAllen, for me visually, there's nothing below the surface apart from we're McAllen. That's their heritage. It's just a name. Yeah, I wasn't kind of into whiskey when McAllen was supposedly really good whiskey. I've only yeah. experienced it to be okay whiskey with an inflated mm. price. I would put it in between Noyce and Mare overall. Because mm. visually, I think it is good and it's unique yeah. and it stands out. It's just they could do better, must try harder. So we came to hear what you guys think of these whiskey bottles. What bottles did we miss? What is your favorite whiskey bottle? What's your most hated, you know, bottle? Uh, leave a comment down below. Thanks, Jeff, for joining us. Thank you for all your knowledge and the good banter. Share and yeah. enjoy. Beauty. Cheers. I don't have a, <laughs> I don't have a slick outro like you. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to the next one.